We here at Freight Waves are following a developing story. The largest bankruptcy in truckload history could happen any day. An internal source with Celadon Group based out of Indiana tells Freight Waves they are planning on filing for bankruptcy. J.P. Hampstead, it joins me now. You broke this story yesterday and have been following it. Break this down for us and what does this look like right now? This is a top 20 truckload carrier in the United States, um, operating also in Mexico and Canada. Over 3,000 drivers and tractors. They've had some financial difficulty recently. I've been divesting some of their assets, like uh, different business units that they've been selling off to try to keep the company afloat. And they've also had some, some recent uh, criminal uh, issues with previous management. Um, and that had to lead, that led them to have to restate some financial statements. But right now, you know, we've heard that essentially they tried to do a turnaround of a billion dollar trucking company in one of the worst markets we've seen in the past 10 years. And, you know, it proved to be impossible. And, yeah. and so, yeah, we, we talked to some people at Celadon and they're, they're preparing to file chapter 11. Yeah, so they have not filed yet for Chapter 11, but we are continuing to follow that. We're talking about 3,500 jobs, people losing their jobs, unfortunately, right before Christmas. This is probably the worst time for something like this to happen, but you said they tried to turn around a company in such a horrible market. Was this bound to happen? We've been reporting on so many truckload carriers closing. Was some a carrier of this size, was it bound to happen? I don't think it was bound to happen. I don't think it was inevitable. Um, in the article, we briefly discuss uh, some of the uh, negotiations between Celadon's biggest creditors, and they, it looked like there had been an opportunity to kind of throw a Hail Mary pass and, and uh, save the company. That ended up not working out. So I don't want to say that it was inevitable. I mean, you know, it, it was just, um, for whatever reason, these two parties couldn't come to an agreement and um, you know, the company eventually ran out of time. You've been following this company for a while, not just because of this potential bankruptcy, but other things. What have you uncovered about the company? We initially started being very interested in them, obviously, when they had to, they announced that they had to restate some financial reporting, which that ended up crashing the stock uh, getting them delisted, and um, that's when you know a lot. Of, I think a lot of people became aware of the problems the company was having. Eventually, um, the leadership team who was in place left. They started. They, they went to other companies, um, and then they started getting indicted for securities fraud and things like that. Um, there was an, an initial wave of charges and some guilty pleas, and then it, it looks like there was another wave of charges that hit earlier this week. So that's kind of been the story as I understand it. I mean, we knew that uh, you know Paul Finland, Tom Albrecht had come in to you know go back through the company, identify the problems, figure out what was working, what wasn't, try to get this thing back on on the right course. I think they went into that job knowing that there were probably a lot of problems they weren't aware of yet. They knew that they had limited resources and a limited amount of time to try to pull this thing off. Um, so, you know, I think, you know, it's really not their fault at all. Um, it was just, you know, you're talking about a very complicated, you know, billion dollar transportation company, again, in a market where you don't know what your revenue is going to be. You don't know how much price your customers are going to try to take back. And it's, it's, it's very hard to plan for, very hard to execute. And they have not, I, I wanted to say, this was, this is Saturday when this is airing, and we're recording this right now. They've not filed for bankruptcy, but we are continuing to follow that. You said the fuel cards were still working, but there's a lot of rumors going on, a lot of drivers talking. So this is something you will continue to follow for us here at Freight Waves then. And that, yes, and that's one of the reasons why after talking to the internal source, we, we, we spoke and we said, do you know what's gonna happen to the drivers? Because that's, we've seen it have, happen with Falcon and some other, some other shutdowns where drivers were left stranded and we're like, you know, we need to let these people know. We need to let, we need to make sure that they uh, can prepare, can tank up their trucks and try to get back 
to a safe place, to friends and family, to their homes. That is a great point you make, and obviously we will continue to follow this story here at Freight Waves. If you want to read JP's article, just go to FreightWaves.com.